I've gone everywhere uh, on my bike in Detroit. You know, Corktown, I've gone all the way to Hamtramck on my bike, down to Southwest Detroit on the new Southwest Greenway by Michigan Central Station. I, you know, all the way, you know, down to the river and Jefferson up and down, you know, go back home through DeQuinder Cut, through Brush Park home. Yeah, it's, it's really empowering to me to be able to just get on my bike and explore. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Simmerman and that is Kristen Fairman from Detroit, Michigan. And we're gonna be talking about her efforts uh, to document the experience that she's having walking in Detroit. Uh, let's get right to it with Kristen. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be here. So, Kristen, I'd love to give my guests just an opportunity to introduce themselves. So, who's Kristen? So, Kristen is uh, 10 years car free in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm a writer, an artist, and an overall creative. And after being car free for about eight years in cities like New York, Boston and San Francisco, I decided it would be a fun challenge to come to Detroit and share my lifestyle with the community here. So I've been documenting it on my blog called Walking Detroit. Right. Fantastic. And uh, so, but you're not originally from Detroit, you're originally from Traverse City. And if we pull up the the map here, uh, you know, for folks and, and, uh, a, you know, especially since we have an international audience, it's nice to kind of give a bearing, you know, as to where Michigan is and where Detroit is and where uh, Traverse City is. So Detroit and uh, and we see Ann Arbor prominently mentioned there uh, are down towards the southern end of the state. And uh, uh, and we see Detroit start out there because I've spent a, a quite a bit of time there in Detroit. But boy, you're from way, way up here. Way, way, way up. Way not up. quite not not quite the upper peninsula, but you know, the sort of the northern section of the lower section of the state of Michigan. What was it like growing up here in, in uh Traverse City? Yeah, it was a Lake Michigan paradise. I actually I actually grew up right up if you go to the top in a little community called Grelicville. Okay. And that's a part of Traverse City. Wow. My grandparents built a house on M22, the, the long stretch of road that goes up and down the bay in 1949. They met in the, the 20s uh, at a one-room schoolhouse. They were neighbors. And so I'm you know, sixth generation Traverse City, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, right here. Yep. Yeah, I grew up right next door to my grandparents in that little brown house next to the white one. And I, you know, loved swinging in the backyard of my grandparents' house. I was an only child, so I spent a lot of time outside reading, drawing, going to the beach across the street. But the thing that you can see very clearly from the photo is we had a big highway right in my front yard. So yeah, yeah. I really crave that walkability. I didn't have kids in my neighborhood to play with. I, so I really use my imagination growing up. Wow. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's truly a, a beautiful place, uh, you know, up there. Um, my impression, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, because as we mentioned before I hit the record, but before we hit the record button, uh, I think I was last there back in the 90s. <laughs> and so it's been a long time since I've been in the Traverse City. Uh, but my impression of it is it's very much a, um, in some ways, a vacation destination. And then I've also kind of heard that maybe it's also a retirement destination. What, el what else is going on in Traverse City? Is that kind of a, a little bit of the zeitgeist up there? Yeah, spot on. It's very much a good place to raise families, a good place to retire, but it's really emerged as kind of a, you know, in the Zoom land, you know, world that we're living in. A lot of people are moving there, working from home, starting cool businesses. 
So restaurants are um, a big draw up there as well as breweries, wineries, and as you can see, agriculture, you know, beautiful landscape. So I really, you know, grew up in a farm family and, you know, have a, have a green thumb. And my cousin even sold vegetables and their vegetable stand out in the farm. My grandma was raised on. My aunt still lives there uh, out on M72. So that's a big part of me is, you know, the natural world, preserving history. And I, I hope Traverse City continues to preserve the history and the land and it doesn't get so overgrown. But I, I've seen a bit of that, you know, over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so bring us up to speed on, on your, your story. So you're currently in Detroit. So you're, you're in Motor City, as they, as they say. When you left Traverse City, where did you go and when was that? Sure. So I first left Traverse City in 2003 when I went down to Mount Pleasant for college. I went to CMU, Central Michigan University, I went to school for entrepreneurship and marketing. So I've done a bunch of things, you know, my whole career. And I like to have my hand in a lot of different projects. So, you know, entrepreneurship was my major. Marketing was my minor. And then I graduated right when uh, the recession was, you know, kind of hitting. And I, I moved down to Metro Detroit for a year. I was... I was in a relationship, living in the suburbs. And back then, Detroit was not a place, you know, a 22-year-old girl would live, you know, downtown like I am now. And it's, I really came full circle moving back to Detroit after the pandemic. I spent, I spent the pandemic in Traverse City, actually. So I, I was able to experience it in my 30s. And, uh, you know, it was nice. It was a great place to be when life was slow. But I was really craving to get back to a city. And I thought, why not try Detroit? Right. Yeah. And, and, and you say get back to a city because um, about a decade ago, you moved to New York. I did. Yeah. And so this is a series of photos that you were gracious enough to to send along of New York City. Um, And you had mentioned before we hit record as well that you spent uh, 2013 uh, sort of testing out the waters of Charlotte, North Carolina as well, um, which which is a fabulous city now. I just had an opportunity to be there last year uh, and, and, and really document where, where Charlotte has come, but talk a little bit about, yeah, that transition of, of dipping your toe into that sort of city living. Cause there is no bigger city than, you know, in the, in North America than going to the big apple. Right. Well, the trajectory is interesting because I, after I was in Metro Detroit, 2007, 2008, I went to San Francisco Okay. And so I lived there with a car and without a car. So at first, first I had a car, learned how much, you know, how convenient buses were, transit, walkability. So that was 2008 to 2011. I was back in Traverse City from 2011 until 2013 with a car. Right. Begrud- begrudgingly. But... I was, I was next door to my grandma before she passed away. So that was really, really special to me. So I did the Charlotte thing after reuniting with someone I had met in San Francisco. Okay. W- went down there without my car and realized how quickly, how limited I was, you know, just being uptown Charlotte. But I made it work because I was able to find, you know, clothing stores I liked, you know, shops, restaurants, little things, you know, exploring. And that, I believe, was before the rail came in. I don't know, maybe. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, because it must have been. Yeah. And and just for clarification for, for folks tuning in, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, they call their downtown uptown uh, because it's up on a hill. And so or that's how they've described it to me is, is so when, when we say uptown, that's kind of what they mean is it's like in the center city and where things are happening and and uh, a lot of the cultural institutions 
institutions are there. But yeah, you may be right. It may be before that rail got instituted, which really is is just tremendous what has how that has transformed Charlotte, because now you have, you know, a lot of transit oriented development that has, you know, you know, really sprouted up all throughout that Charlotte area. So it's becoming much more walkable and bikeable uh, and the ability to use transit, too. Right. Right. And back then, I really made it work going, you know, to Harris Teeter across the street from my apartment, finding a yoga studio I liked. You know, it was limited in what I could do. So when I, uh, I decided to go to New York, that was about April 2014. I went back to Michigan, gathered my things, sold my car, and I have not even driven a car since June of 2014. Wow. So almost 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And so this photo here, we've got you uh, at, at 96th Street. We are styling in some very fashionable glasses here. Uh, so so talk about this journey and you know what this was like being in New York and living this lifestyle of walking and using transit. And, and uh, uh, were, were you biking much as well um, at this stage? No, okay. I wasn't biking. I did bike in San Francisco, but I did not in New York. I, similar to how I have a blog about walking now, back then I had a blog about style. And I, I, re, I really implemented the scenery, places I would go, cool art on the walls, into my daily outfits, and I would talk about um, – you know, small designers I liked or thrifting. Thrifting was a big thing, you know, kind of being creative with fashion. So that's what led me to New York ultimately was to be around more, you know, like-minded people, kind of get into the industry. I wanted to start designing and I found a place, um, um, you just scrolled through the picture in the, in my lobby of my first building. Oh, this was um, the it, first building here. Yeah. That that's where I lived. That was, that photo was taken October, 2014. And I've always really loved tote bags. I've always really loved kind of a minimal style. And I, you know, really, um, enjoyed that. And that was a building on 98th street called Sabrina. And so I have a really uh, fond memory of my time there and being able to go downstairs to the grocery store. We had West Side Market right there. I bought an air conditioner for my my room and carried it home. Like I loved having everything at my fingertips. And I really kind of stopped. I kind of like stepped away from being there for fashion and really found a love of the simplicity and just sitting in Central Park and chatting with a stranger. And my life and perspective really changed in New York because I wasn't there for, you know, the glitz and the glamour. I was there for the community I found. Right. Yeah, that's fabulous. And a big part of that experience when you talk about the community is it is really embracing a, a little bit of the grit as well as the, the art and, and everything yeah. that just kind of comes out organically. Yes. That's what I loved so much. So much. As you see, um, I was walking on the high line and I would just admire all of the architecture, the art and the creativity in New York. And that's what I love so much about Detroit because people have been so creative with taking nothing and making it beautiful and I'm very, very passionate about that, you know, being able to really embrace transformation, both in ourselves, but also the world around us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the High Line. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about the High Line. Yeah, the High Line is um, it was a, a tra- track that w- was created into a park, a, an elevated park. So it's along um, the West Side Highway on the Hudson River. And so you can, it's a, a hop, skip and a jump from Chelsea Market and the Meatpacking District. So it's now a very high rent area, but it's, it's one of those projects where they took something 
you know, that used to be something else and they created it into a walkable space. So any, any kind of creative placemaking, um, I'm really passionate about, especially when, you know, it really makes for, you know, a community. Yeah. yeah. So good. my mom, my mom really enjoyed her time with me too. And, you know, even in her, you know, late sixties, she's walking 30, 40 blocks with me in Manhattan and just t- to see how, She's taken what she's, uh, you know, some of the activities she's done with me and implemented it into her own life, like walking downtown Traverse City and knowing how, you know, fun it is to just enjoy the world around you when you're getting from point A to point B. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's, um, I, I love New York. I haven't spent much time there, but I also just, I love this level of urbanism that you have and uh you this particular photo that you have is you know kind of a snapshot of a row house there's a bike in in the foreground of it this is like the the complete antithesis in some ways of that little house on michigan 22 you know it really is because you have elements of the natural world with you know the ivy you have the beautiful architecture of the building, the the bike, and it just, I don't know, it just makes my heart sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the interesting thing, too, about Detroit, and a lot of people don't know this about Detroit, uh, they, they may know what they hear and what they see uh, in, in media, and, uh, and oftentimes it's not all that pleasant and or uh, flattering of, of, you know, the, the, the scenes in Michigan, but Michigan itself and, and Detroit, Michigan in particular, uh, has a tremendous number of just absolutely beautiful buildings and architecture. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking of a building like the guardian building, you go inside the guardian building and, and the interior is just so fantastic. Uh, What was that draw for you, uh, you know, of getting, you know, to Detroit and and wanting to, you know, come back to, you know, that area? So I have some friends who have worked on projects down here. One friend is a landscape architect, and I've seen some of the transformation of projects over the past 10, five years or so. And, you know, one of my friends who's from Sutton's Bay she lived downtown Detroit and walked to work. And I thought, wow, if, if she does it, I, I should be able to do it. I've done it, you know, in all these other places. And it's close enough where my mom can just hop in the car and come down and see me. I can, you know, take the Amtrak to other cities from here. And it just logically made sense for where I was at in my life to be in a city, but to still be in a close proximity to my family. So... I I did know about all of the beautiful, you know, architecture in Detroit, the musical scene, the art scene, and it just really seemed like a good fit for me. And I like the idea of renewal. I like the idea of some grit. And yeah, just the creativity here is incredible. I'm a big fan of Art Deco, you know, style, architecture, just art in general. So you know, downtown is always a joy to just walk through, um, look at the arches on the buildings, look at, you know, just the creativity is incredible here. Yeah. Yeah. And you just mentioned arches on a building. We're, we're focused on an arch here with the clock, uh, suspended, uh, in that arch. Is this also in Detroit? It is, it is in, um, it's on Woodward in the cultural district, so close to where I live, but um, across the street from the DIA, the Detroit Institute of Arts, which was just named the number one museum in the United States by USA wow. Today. Nice. For that the second year in a row. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, and I, I, I love the story that, that, de- that is Detroit. For, for those people who aren't super, super familiar with the, distor- with the story of Detroit, Detroit was like number two, number three 
largest, most vibrant, most prosperous city way back when, you know, number, number one was New York. And, and, and again, number two or number three was, was Detroit at it, in its heyday. I mean, it was one of the most vibrant, most wealthy, um, cities and the architecture reflected that. I mean, the beautiful buildings, we mentioned the, the, the guardian building earlier, and, uh, you, you mentioned some art deco and you go through and you, you realize, oh man, this was just truly, truly a fantastic place. Detroit right. of today is in a situation where it has like almost a million less people. Is that correct? Is it something like 800,000 oh, yeah. or a million less people than what it had in its heyday? And so you see what we see and what we see on TV and what we hear about is the devastation that took place in the abandoned buildings and the abandoned lots. But there's still a tremendous inventory of amazing structures, amazing buildings. And so I just wanted to pause and emphasize that, that if you haven't been to Detroit recently, it is coming back. It is fun. Uh, there's such great architecture architecture that was preserved because honestly they didn't even have the money to tear it down and so a lot of right. those buildings just sat empty until someone finally came along to to re redo them but then, then there is also the other thing that you had mentioned you know the grit and the funkiness and the and the fun that comes in and that's kind of what we're looking at here with a, a beautiful mural in the background so talk a little bit about this that mural is in my neighborhood in Midtown, and it is uh, actually painted by a friend of a friend. He goes by um, uh, fell three thousand feet, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but you got it. It's right there. Yeah, fell three thousand feet. I was right. Yeah, yeah, and just researching artists around the city too is one of my passions, and learning about them, connecting with them. I've met some of them. And just being able to share the beauty. But I really love this, this woman. She has red lips and there's a quote, you know, and I like the, the part at the bottom, keep your heart true and mind strong Detroit. And that I think really shows just the, percep the pers like perspective of, you know, just the city and its resilience. And this is actually on the other side of Hopcat restaurant. So it's interesting how just an ordinary building or a restaurant can really, you know, have a lot of personality and soul with some paint. Yeah. And a beautiful statue here. Yes, this is outside of the library, the main library branch on Woodward. And that pose, I think, is really cool. It really spoke to me. You can see the bike in the background, too. Yeah, yeah. So the library is somewhere that I go quite frequently. I either walk walk down Woodward or bike down Cass. And you can also get there on the queue line or the bus. And I chose where I live based on all of the all the surrounding, you know, features, such as markets, uh, the library, I'm close to the museum. But as you, as you had mentioned before, some of the beautiful architecture and homes that were just abandoned, uh, my neighborhood was actually revitalized by a developer named Joel Landy. And unfortunately, he passed away in 2020, but he was known as sort of an eccentric, crazy developer who saw something in Cass Corridor in Midtown that you know, people didn't see it was once dangerous, but he started buying buildings and fixing them up. And one of them is right by my apartment building. And it's an old home called the James Scott Mansion. And it, it looks like a castle. It is incredible. It's on Peterborough Street. And it's now six apartments. So to be able to do something with you know, an old space and not only, you know, have it be for, you know, someone wealthy with money, you know, a Brush Park mansion, uh, which was known as Little Paris. There's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, real estate that's not affordable to the average person, but, you know, to have a beautiful mansion be turned into housing for people that's affordable, I think is just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we've got a classic book here <laughs> it's on screen. <laughs> we do, we do, of course. Yes, so, it's all about been, purpose, right? That's right, absolutely. Uh, and so we have a, a, an image here uh, of a bus going past a mural. What, what moved you about this particular image? So I always like um, a good transit photo, but I, I loved the the sign on the building there. When I first moved to the city, I saw everything is going to be all right. And it lights up at night. And then I later learned it is uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art, uh, known as MOCAD. So that museum is free to the public. They have a cafe inside too. And as I was walking to the library with the alchemist in hand on Saturday, <laughs> uh, I saw this and just the way the bus was going by at that time was perfect. So, and, and I think just the message of everything is going to be all right is important to see every day for people to remember, just to keep one day at a time, keep going. Especially, you know, in a city where we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of destruction, a lot of the whole world right now. You know, there's a lot going on, but just you know, spreading positivity, I think, and not being focused in the problem is so important. Yeah. yeah. Now, earlier we saw uh, you, you posing with your coffee cup with the mural in the background. And it looks like we found the, 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 the coffee place here in the Red Hook. We did. Yes, the Red Hook's a great coffee spot. One of my other friends, her name is Amy. She took me to another Red Hook location when I first moved here in the West Village. So she and her husband are both car free too. So I was really excited to see this location open by my apartment uh, last year. Very nice. Very nice. And there's nothing better than, you know, a wonderful, you know, place to get a cup of coffee and walk around. As my good friend uh, Mark Nikita calls it, he calls those the walkers. Grab your cup of coffee and walk around the city and take it in. And one of the things that I'd love to, to point out about Detroit, too, is we saw just how massive some of those streets are. And that was kind of the, the, the thing that took place as Motor City. They did build the city and it grew up around the automobile in so many ways. And so many of the streets in the downtown Detroit area are massively wide. And now they're way overbuilt. And so that's the one thing that we're starting to see is the city being very intentional about trying to reimagine what that right of way and how that right of way is used. And so we're seeing some protected bikeways going in. We're seeing an expansion of the pedestrian realm happening. Obviously, it's not happening as fast as we would all like to see it happen, uh, but that's money. <laughs> and the city is, is not that many years off of its bankruptcy. And so, True. yeah, and, and so it is happening in, and we're starting to see the transformation of that. But it is an amazing evolution and transformation of downtown Detroit. And you also see, you know, the Tro Detroit Greenways coming together. You've got the De Dekender Cut. You've got the, you know, the pathway along the riverfront happening. And so embracing uh, active mobility and walking is very much a part of the new zeitgeist of Motor City. It really is. And I know how beloved places like Dequinder Cut are. Eastern Market is right there. To be able to you know, get from point A to point B, do your daily errands, catch up with a friend, grab a coffee. It's, it, we've been stepping away from that driving, parking, you know, being separated from each other. You know, neighborhoods are finally connecting. There's a little bit more density. There's, like you said, a long way to go. But we do have pockets of the city, such as where I live in Midtown. This area here is really nice for having everything you need and being able to, you know, connect to other neighborhoods a little more easily. Yeah, yeah. And I've felt quite comfortable uh, riding in in Detroit, whenever I visit Detroit, I always have my Brompton bicycle with me. And so I zip around uh, the city and do some filming and, and pop on down to the to Kinder Cut and, and capture the, the vibrancy that's happening down there. This is a photo of you uh, there in the Midtown area uh, with your bike. With my bike and my bike basket. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that part of 
of that part of your life of, you know, embracing and getting around not only by walking, but also by jumping on the bike and, and how that kind of expands your realm. I like to say that riding a bike, especially an urban bike, uh, a, a relaxed, upright kind of bike is just pedestrian plus. It, it's a ninefold increase in, in the amount of distance that you can comfortably, you know, travel and you don't have to be an athlete to do it. You're just, you know, getting around. Definitely. I've gone everywhere uh, on my bike in Detroit, you know, Corktown. I've gone all the way to Hamtramck on my bike down to Southwest Detroit on the new Southwest Greenway by Michigan Central Station. I, you know, all the way, you know, down to the river and Jefferson up and down, you know, go back home through DeQuinder Cut, through Brush Park home. Yeah, it's, it's really empowering to me to be able to just get on my bike and explore. I've been careful about not exploring out too far and not knowing, you know, you know, there, you do have to be careful as, you know, a, a small you know, woman riding her bike in unknown neighborhoods in Detroit. But for the most part, I've experienced nothing but positive. Yeah. And, and just to be clear too, I mean, Detroit is starting to evolve into a place where, where people think, oh, this is where some really cool bike infrastructure is coming in and some really cool bike companies. I mean, the Detroit bike company is a, a business that is, is famous for building really cool, hip, uh, relaxed, upright bikes. And they, you know, employ people locally. They manufacture the bikes locally. Um, they're not necessarily all that cheap. <laughs> they're, they're, they're definitely a designer bike. Uh, but it is, it, that's part of, again, that zeitgeist that is emerging and is evolving for uh, what used to be known as the Motor City. Right. There's a neat bike shop right by my apartment too called Back Alley Bikes and they refurbish bikes and they help kids get bikes and, you know, different communities and they have a lot of different rides, fundraisers and and they also have a bike shop where you can get your bike fixed. So I go there to get air in my tires and say hi. They're really nice there. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. But really, this is you. You're walking Detroit. <laughs> so I'm walking Detroit. More. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about your persona and the work that you're doing as part of walking Detroit. Sure. Before I moved here, a few people laughed at me when I told them that I was moving to Detroit without a car. And they said, there's no way you can do it. And I thought, well, I'll show them how I do it. And I'll show them all the things that I see along the way. And a lot of people think, you know, I, I'm a photographer and I go out just to take pictures. And that's very not the case at all. I use my iPhone and I share what I see as I'm out and about. But truly, I've been doing the same thing I'm doing now for many years. Just I didn't have a platform for it. So if you go to my Instagram, just my personal Instagram and see, you know, my Boston pictures, my New York pictures, Charlotte even, it's. It's what you'd see, um, just a different place. But my photography style is, you know, similar because it's just the vision of the world I see around me. And I think a lot of people might walk around and just see cars and pavement and old buildings. But I'm, I'm sharing, even if it is an old building, the way I see it and um, enjoying it, enjoying slowing down and seeing the world around me. So whether it's a new cafe I walk by or whether it's, you know, just flowers, just this is what I see. And you miss all of that when you're in your car. Even if you're on your bike, you might not see that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And walking really started for me as a way to clear my mind. Right. It, was, it wasn't even about getting from point A to point B. It was, you know, f for my mental health and just being outside, it really was beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you're producing content, you're, you're, you're posting things out there. Is this something that is a pastime or is this something that is, you know, your new identity and your new uh, vocation? I'd say it's 
it's a pastime. It's not a business. Okay. It's cer- I certainly have not accepted money to post something at this point um, because it's, that wouldn't be authentic. If I posted, yeah, it, I, I don't, that's why I stopped blogging when it got to be, you know, when my, when my authenticity was compromised, it wasn't fun anymore. Yeah, it would be, it would be fun to have a certain, I don't know whether starting a nonprofit or something would be my next step to try to encourage more walkable neighborhoods, placemaking, that would be something I'd be really interested in, connecting with people to encourage walking. But at this point, it is a pastime, but it's a, it's a passion. And I do think of it as an identity in a way, but it's certainly not um, a business. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, you know, obviously, as somebody who's a content creator myself, it's, it's always a challenge when you are passionate about something and you're, you're trying to mix it being both an avocation and a vocation at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And so I do freelance writing. Um, I do a little marketing work for other types of business. And I also am working for a travel company, so uh, uh, doing walking tours. So I actually... <laughs> Yeah, it's City Tour Detroit. So I actually created a brand new tour that's going to be launching in April. And it's all focused on art in the people mover stations and around the people mover stations downtown. Okay. Fantastic. Now, you also have a design website. Is that an activity that you're also working on? It is, yes. And I've implement I've implemented Walking Detroit and both city tours into my own design brand. And my brand is, it's something I started during COVID because when I was home um, by myself with my cat in 2020, I started painting a lot. I started writing, I'd write messages on rocks and I'd leave them around town as I walked to try to, you know, brighten people's day and kind of maybe who knows what lives I could, you know, touch or inspire just by seeing a painting on a rock. Cause I've seen things like that on street art that have really helped me. So I, you know, tried to use my energy toward, you know, creating things during the, the pandemic. So then I found a piece of recycled artwork on the side of the road during COVID. And it was the day I bought my bike actually. So this is like kismet. My friend had her big SUV. Like if I weren't driving down Old Mission Peninsula with my friend, this never would have happened. Uh, so we, we bought my bike that day and then we went to go visit a friend. And on our way home, we saw a bunch of stuff on the side of the road. And I recreated that canvas and it actually became the the piece of art you see on the screen. And then the piece... The piece behind me is actually another piece of recycled art. So I turned those abstracts into fabric. (laughs) That is fantastic. The one that you see there is named after my first building in New York. Okay. Sabrina. And then this one is actually named after a friend of mine in Austin. Oh, wow. Fantastic. That's great. Her name is Sean Toller, and I worked at her husband's law firm. (laughs) That's great. Well, you're going to have to come visit me in Austin one of these days. Yeah. So I really, you know, I I used my own life experience and people that have inspired me along the way uh, into this like brand of mine. And so I I also use pictures. Uh, If you look at the places as well as the abstract design, each of these are people or, you know, buildings. Uh, Charlotte, like Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. And they all kind of correspond with a photo. So. I love it. I love it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. This is uh, Jonathan, a friend of mine who um, was a friend in New York, but we also met originally in Boston. Yeah. And you mentioned it's, you it's like fun. tote bags. And so we've got our tote bags. So you're taking this art and you are putting this onto here as well. Yeah. I yeah. love this. You're just, you're so like, like you said, you have a lot of entrepreneurial spirit in you. Yeah. I, I, I've never really thrived in an environment where I was restricted to doing one thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and I've uh, scrolled to uh, your, your main uh, page, your homepage on your website here. And you mentioned earlier the Sabrina, uh, you know, abstract art that you did. And so here is the Sabrina tote. (laughs) There it is. Yeah. You have it right there. I love it. This is so cool. This is very, very cool. Um, Thank you. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy for you too, in the sense that you really kind of, you know, just didn't even listen to the people who were, were like, you're going to do what? You're going to move to Detroit, you know, and you're, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And, and by the <laughs> way, I've been car free for a decade and I'm going to thrive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and try not to be bitter about when people say things like that, but just have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you look at the challenge that we have in our society, in a car centric, car dominated society, uh, any advice that you can, you know, give, uh, especially as a female, especially as, as, as a woman, you know, trying to survive in, in a, an environment, whether it's a big city or little city, a town, uh, to be a little less dependent on the on the automobile, any advice that you might have for them uh, in, in terms of you know obviously there, there's a certain amount of courage or bravery that you know that it's possible. But you you've been doing it for a while now and you've been thinking about it a lot. Um, what sage advice do you have? Yeah, I, I know not everyone has the luxury of just picking up and moving. Or, or leaving their current situation. Um, I, I have been able to do that. And I have, you know, I've, I've know what it's like to live with someone and feel secure and have a, you know, larger space. And it wasn't for me. And I knew kind of going back to the things I loved when I was growing up, you know, like really identifying what your like purpose and passions are. And if, if you, you don't feel aligned with your current situation, you know, really kind of ponder that, you know, what, what, what makes me happy? You know, does a big house make me happy or could I downsize? And, you know, do I really value being across the street from a market? You know, like looking at your values, not what society is saying that you need to do. That I think is number one, really like, what do I value in my everyday life? Does this make me happy? And then also, I, I was actually so impressed yesterday when I was taking the bus up to Troy to get these headphones, actually. <laughs> I went to the Apple store, the closest Apple store, and I saw someone I knew in Royal Oak walking across the street with a grocery bag. I was shocked. A man, a man that I, I knew um, who was a member of the Detroit Athletic Club. Like I, I saw him every morning when I worked there. So I was really happy to see someone in the suburbs walking and it might not be the most, it might be a little hostile. You might have to cross, you know, six lanes of traffic, but seeing what it's like, you know, even if you live in a car dominant area, see what it's like, you know, to walk to the market, walk to the grocery store in your area, you know, if it's safe. I'd, I'd bet it probably is. You just might get some funny looks. I got funny looks walking around Traverse City. Like, you know, this is a beautiful, like a beautiful bay town. And you're looking at me funny because I'm not in a car. Right. You know, it, it's just so funny how people truly have that car mindset. If you're not driving, something's wrong. But I've never been more healthy and mentally strong as I've been since being car free. Yeah. 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 Now, so you are putting your content out on Instagram. Uh, are there any other platforms that you're active in? I have a blog called walking dot blog. So, um, that's on Tumblr and I'm working on more of a guided website, you know, by neighborhood, so that's in the works. I have TikTok. I, I'm not super active on TikTok and Facebook, but I do have them. There you are. Here's, here's your TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get better at video. I dipped my toes in YouTube and I decided to start over. Um, I do have a new vlog camera, but 
for now, I, I've kept things pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like about video and, you know, still photography and, and comparing and contrasting the two? I prefer photography because it feels more authentic to me because there's less work involved. Like, it's just what I see. I feel like I feel creatively stifled a little bit when I have to like edit or like (laughs) think about it where I, I, I think it's a more natural feel for me to just snap a picture, maybe like, like change the coloring a little bit. Like it feels more like from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Where the video feels like it's just for views for me. Yeah, yeah. But I think if I were to do more like talking, I, I've been a little hesitant to do a lot of like personality and video in my content because I'm a single woman walking around Detroit. Like I don't want I, I already have people know who I am. So I, I don't know, just a safety thing right now. It doesn't feel like I want to do a whole lot of that. Right, right. Yeah. I'd rather just people like my photos and my funny little videos of, you know, the Q line than like know a lot about me talking. Yeah. So you mentioned your your blog earlier. So let's pull pull the blog up. And so we have that. And let me uh, make sure that we can see this. We'll zoom out. There's the full blog. Excellent. You, I used an Art yeah. Deco font for my walking Detroit, and that was very yeah. much on purpose yeah. to, as, an, as an homage to our Art Deco history and architecture. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. There, there you go. U of M. Little ban- U of M banner there. Yeah. U of Fantastic. M is just one block. U of M Detroit is right by my yes. apartment. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So blogging truly is like kind of my identity ever since okay. like 2009. I've loved being a blogger, a writer, okay. just sharing. Right. Now you mentioned that you sort of decommissioned your your previous blog. And so this is sort of a reboot uh, under the Walking Detroit banner and yeah. the zeitgeist of not necessarily trying to monetize. Is that, am I getting, did I understand that correctly? Right. Right. I started my fashion blog as a creative outlet when I was in Traverse City, like feeling like I wanted to connect with, you know, other people that were like minded. And that was in 2011. I started the fashion blog. And like I had mentioned before, when I was in New York and I started getting free things and money, it, it, I, I, the passion kind of faded. And that's when I got into walking. That's when I got into like more of a minimalist lifestyle. And I realized, you know, less is more for me. Even yesterday, going to the mall up in Troy was super overstimulating. It brought me back to like that 2008 suburb life I lived where, you know, it was like more, more, more. What you have isn't good enough. And that it, I just it. Yeah, <laughs> I was ready to come back to Detroit <laughs> to close us out. Share with us something that would surprise people about walking in Detroit. I would say how many interesting and beautiful things you come across at every turn. We have beautiful um, tiles, Powabic tiles throughout the city. And I've had a lot of fun learning about Mary Chase Stratton, the founder. They She founded the company in 1904 with her partner. And to be able to see those little hidden pieces all throughout the architecture, in the people mover stations, and how much creativity there is everywhere in Detroit. It's really fascinating. I love it. This has been so much fun catching up with you. Thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you for having me on, John. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Kristen. If you did, please, hey, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you're enjoying this content here on the Active Towns channel, please consider supporting my efforts. It's easy to do so. Just navigate on over to activetowns.org and click on that support button. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. It really means so much to me. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.
And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.